Thank you. And I call Paul Gibbon, Chairperson of the Justice Committee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I don't intend to cover too many uh, specific issues because I appreciate this is legislation and under your uh, guidance, ministers are to come in regularly uh, where they can to give statements that will give us an opportunity to do that. And Naomi Long did come in uh, yesterday and we were able to go into detail. And I don't want to detain the health minister any longer than is necessary, but I just want to put on record uh, some of the issues that uh, we discussed uh, as a committee. Some of those members in my party won't be allowed to speak in order to give uh, time uh, to get this proceeded as quickly as possible. The committee did receive a briefing and closed session from the department officials regarding what was described. At that stage, a uh, potential legislation being required in light of the then emerging threat from the coronavirus. Uh, the briefing was high level, uh, detailed what exactly would be covered in such a bill, uh, the detail of which was limited. However, today we are now seeing and considering the legislation. The committee held an additional meeting yesterday to take more detailed evidence from Department of Justice officials on the coronavirus bill, and the committee uh, wants to put on record our appreciation for those officials that made themselves available to do so, given the pressure they are under. Officials gave details of the justice-related provisions of the bill as introduced at Westminster that will be extended to Northern Ireland, and that included information which the Minister has outlined here in the Assembly, temporary modifications to Mental uh, Capacity Act, uh, temporary provisions in relation to registration of deaths and stillbirths in Northern Ireland, provision to spend requirements in Northern Ireland for an inquest to be held with a jury in relation to death from COVID-19, provision to disapply the requirement for an inquest to be held with a jury in relation to a death from natural illness, additional powers in Northern Ireland to act for the protection of public health, including, for example, the, police, the power for police to take a person into custody in particular circumstances, the use of live links in legal proceedings, uh, and powers to enable local government to direct providers in the death management uh, industry. In addition, the committee was advised of potential proposed amendments to the bill uh, enabling the department to make an early release direction that would have applied to certain fixed-term prisoners who fall within the criteria specified by the department. I note that the Ministry of Justice decided not to proceed uh, in including that in the bill that is uh, before us. Uh, officials did, uh, and the minister indicated yesterday, powers already exist. Uh, if we get to the stage when it comes to managing that situation in our prison uh, population. The Minister, worth repeating, indicated at all times it will be based upon public safety. There are some people that should not be released uh, during this crisis, uh, and that needs to be the guiding principle when it comes to any potential uh, release of uh, prisoners. In the evidence, the Department uh, all, uh, told the Committee uh, provisions in the bill would be activated only when it is necessary to do so and on the best available scientific advice, and they will remain in place for as long as is necessary. In addition, provisions can be extended or amended by regulations, but in the case of devolution matters, that this can only be done with the consent of executive ministers. It is a question that I, I, I would ask the minister if he can just uh, give clarity to. Uh, is there provision for this executive to bring forward emergency legislation, if it becomes necessary, that falls out with the coronavirus bill that Westminster has taken forward? Is there provisions uh, that would uh, facilitate that if it became necessary? Um, I note that there are schedules to give orders, uh, powers to departments to issue orders. I am just looking for some clarity if those orders only relate to the provisions in the coronavirus bill. We do not know what circumstances could arise, and if it is not covered, I want to know if the executive will be able to action uh, those areas through its own emergency procedures. Under normal circumstances, the committee would have had more time, but these are not uh, normal circumstances. We have seen over the last few days that while many people are being sensible and they are adhering to government's advice uh, in respect of social distancing, as one example, there are those that continue to disregard that advice and behaving in a way that is not only harmful to themselves but to others. These are ordin extraordinary times. The situation is serious. Action must be taken. It is therefore essential that authorities have the necessary powers to keep people as safe as possible. The committee did seek further detail from officials on a range of areas, including powers for the department to provide in respect of the early release issue, the implications that that would have had on probation board or indeed even the health service, and how victims of crimes would be notified if any uh, decisions were taken on early release. 
In respect of social distancing, the committee questioned officials on what powers the police would have to enforce this and who was responsible for setting the penalties. Committee members appreciate and accept uh, the need for powers in the areas outlined in this legislation, given the times that we are in. A number of committee members did, though, express concern at the two-year limit that would apply to many of the measures provided for in the Bill, and it was suggested, in light of widespread concern, that the powers in the Bill, being so extensive, that the Government may introduce an amendment to ensure uh, they instead have to be renewed every six months, and, as I understand it, that uh, has been the case. Mr Speaker, as well as the briefing on the bill, the committee had detailed discussions with officials last week uh, on operational preparation across the justice sector. Uh, undoubtedly, uh, the measures being put in place are absolutely necessary, but many are also sensitive, particularly the death management arrangements. The committee took the opportunity to also discuss the proposed resilience arrangements to ensure that the police service and prison service have the adequate resources to carry out the vital work being asked of them, and they sought assurances that the necessary protective equipment would be available for them. I want to put on record uh, the committee's appreciation for the work that is being done under extreme pressure by staff across the justice system. In particular, the police service, the prison service, the courts and tribunal service, as well as the department itself, many of whom will be also trying to manage their own personal situations. To conclude, in my role as chairman, uh, I want to confirm that the committee uh, formally agreed to support uh, the proposals relating to the justice aspects of the provisions contained in the cor uh, coronavirus bill uh, to Northern Ireland by way of the legislative. Uh, consent motion. Some points, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I just wanted to uh, elaborate on uh, slightly further in my role as a member of the Assembly for the constituency of Flag and Valley. Uh, I, I note the Minister, and he is right when it comes to uh, taking decisions. Uh, and he said that we are not blessed with luxury of time, uh, and how true it is. And I know he will be in the department looking at all of the urgent procedures that are needed to get. The testing kits that are available, members have highlighted that, the, the uh, personal protection equipment that needs to be taken. Uh, we, we are not blessed with the ability to go through normal procurement processes. These decisions need to be taken in a very abnormal way, and we understand that. We appreciate that. 600 tests being carried out from today is welcome, but when I look at the calls across uh, the police population, the prison service uh, population, uh, and other key workers identified uh, within those that are de deemed key workers, the numbers within their families. We need to be doing so much more when it comes to testing. And wherever those testing kits can become, can come from, they should be being sought. Uh, and I know that the minister will be pressing that these decisions need to be taken in that context, and that normal procurement processes uh, are being set aside uh, to facilitate that. The public do need uh, to listen, and so far the majority have, but unfortunately some haven't. I took calls of a grandmother who brought her grandchildren in to a bank yesterday to open up a bank account. The message isn't getting through. Parents are having to work, and they're giving them to their grandchildren, and they're taking them out on shopping trips to do things that are not essential. So we need to get the message, and that is going to require punitive measures to be taken, because not everybody is sensible in our society. Whether that is through ignorance or flagrant uh, abuse of the circumstances we face, and so we are moving to the place where those executive office powers that have been taken to close down events uh, are going to have to be acted upon, uh, and it will have my support in doing so. I recognise decisions as well, Mr. Speaker, are being taken outside of normal structures, uh, and uh, we need to, as this develops, to have a, a very clear structured approach from the central government in London, how we're linking with Dublin, how this executive is linking with the other statutory organisations, local authorities, uh, and I know that there are uh, emergency procedures being put in place already to do that in my own constituency. Uh, Lisburn uh, Council has been setting up a structured way because there is an overwhelming number of people wanting to volunteer across a wide spectrum of organisations. But when posts go up saying, contact us and we will provide you with help, and once that contact has been made, then those individuals who are well-meaning 
aren't able to go about actually providing that help. So we need to get the structures in place. And I know the Council uh, will be having a very structured way for community groups to link in. It's important the Executive links in with Councils and other bodies that do that. I also want to commend those that have stepped up and shown unbelievable leadership in the face of such adversity. I want to commend this Minister. I want to commend uh, the First Minister, the Deputy First Minister, uh, and all of the executive people uh, that are at the cold face on this, and those that are seeking to advise them. Because now is very much the time when that leadership needs to be delivered in a very calm but in a very collective way. Uh, and I want to commend those that are doing that. I want to commend Assembly members who are doing that. I know we in Lagan Valley, as a group of five members, uh, have initiated a, a process whereby we can keep in contact to act in unison so that we're not replicating and duplicating our activities. And, and in doing that to members, you all have personal uh, issues that you're having to manage and deal with. And I know I heard a broadcast this morning on one of our broadcasters that allowed an individual to tear lumps out of Assembly members. And we're all human. And there's been a process of dehumanisation of members that's went on for years. And I know in times like this, people want to blame people. They want to look for a vehicle to channel the anger that some people do have. And I just want to commend Assembly members across this House for the resilience that they are showing in the face of very difficult times. And often we don't have the answers, but we're seeking to give the help that we can as best we can in very difficult circumstances. I know within Lagan Valley, three of the Assembly members have wives that are in the health service. Mine's been retrained, redeployed, having to supplement staff in a hospital that's been set up as a COVID-19 front line. She's having to do that. She's changed her shift pattern. She's going in and wants to be in. And we're having to put in place the support to make sure our family uh, can care uh, whenever she does that. And that's the case, I know, for other colleagues in the Lagan Valley MLAs. And that's the case for other members here. I know on Sunday night, I left off a freezer to my 98-year-old grandmother. It became very real when you're having to do that. So members are having to deal with personal situations, and that's reflected across so many parts of government and different people that are providing that support. And we need to do it in a calm and collected way, but with an assurance to know that we're doing the best that we can while we manage all of that. So I want to commend everyone that's stepping up and trying to do that. Now more than ever, Mr Speaker, people are recognising what's most important to them. For so long, we've added things into our lives to try and provide fulfilment, contentment. And as those structures have been shaken to its core, we go back to the things that really matter to us. It's family, it's friends, and wanting to support them now in this environment that we have. I have family that aren't in this country. They're abroad. Colin mentioned calls that he's taken from Taiwan and Australia. That goes for many of our constituents, many of their families. We're not able to provide that reassurance in a in a way that maybe we can with our immediate family by making the phone call and getting that contact. And so that's the same for members here as it is for other people. And we do need to see what the support is uh, with the embassies uh, and trying to have that contact and support in place, particularly as other parts of this world go into a uh, lockdown mode. I, I know the minister, um, we look to him for leadership. And that's a very heavy burden to bear. But I know he, like me, looks above for that leadership and grounds us because of the faith that we have. And for many people, they're searching for what it is that really gives them that support and that structure. For me, it's my faith in God. It may not be the case for other people, even in this chamber. I know it is for this minister. I know it is for other people. And I've taken comfort as we've been developing in this crisis on a number of verses in the Bible, of which fear not is the most common phrase throughout the Bible. Fear not, fear not, because God knows that it's our nature to fear and to be anxious. And so we constantly are reminded, fear not, for I am with thee. And there's a number of verses that I just want to leave with members and, and with the minister, and with that I'll conclude. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with uh, thy right hand of my righteousness. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Mr. Speaker, I, I just want to say that I'm praying for you. I'm praying for our ministers, as are so many people across this country at this time of uncertainty, that they'll be given the wisdom 
to try and uh, navigate us through the very difficult times ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, and I call Kiva Archibald, Chair of the Economy Committee. Um, I rise to speak as Chair of the